Hi everyone, welcome back to Travel with Starns. Thank you for joining us on our journey into the galaxy. We were so excited to stay on the Star Wars Star Cruiser and purposefully did not watch too many videos prior to not muddle our opinion. That being said, our videos are riddled with spoilers and personal experiences. We had audio difficulties the first night as well, so we'll be providing informative voiceovers of what's happening. Stay tuned to witness our first-hand accounts and reactions towards the rooms, food, and the plot as it unfolds. There's nothing like it. Welcome to the Halcyon. At this point, we have already boarded a shuttle and we have arrived on the Halcyon. Here is the main level on the sixth floor. It's called the Atrium. The Atrium holds a lot of the events that are happening as well as the sublight lounge and as well as the gift store. So a lot always happens on the sixth floor. At this time, we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna see our room for the first time. So here's our room. It's very interesting. You unlock with your M band and then you turn the knob and you slide to the right. So let's go take a look. Inside, I feel like we were transported into space. Our cabin had one queen bed, a pull-out Murphy bed, and then two bunks. Um, they were really spacious. Jordan and I each slept in a bunk and we felt really safe. There was a lot of room where we could both sit up in it and it was very comfortable. They came with these really beautiful, delicate quilts that said Chandrilla Starlines on them and just everything was just really done to the highest of quality and we really enjoyed the overall look of the room. Throughout the trip, our purpose was to communicate through a data pad, which was through the Disney Play app on our iPhones. And so we were able to communicate through that with the different characters and leaders throughout. And it um, transported all of our messages through this AI system in our room through our personal robot who we're able to communicate with, get information with, and um, just another really nice personal touch to the overall trip. Let's take a look at the room. All right, so starting from the bathroom, there's a sink, there's soap and lotion on the walls, and then every room came with this free little tin with fa um, foaming bubble masks that could be used. We haven't had a chance to use it yet, but they're really cool and it's a really nice personal touch. Now let's take a look at what the rest of the room has.
drink, I ordered the Dagobah Vimlet, which included vodka, herbaceous orange liqueur, lime, and peppercorn. It was light and fruity and delicious and so crisp and herby. I really enjoyed it. Jordan got a twist on an old fashioned with the steel ice cube in there, and he really enjoyed that as well. So we are currently in the gift store inside the atrium. They have a lot of really cool, interesting things that are unique to the Star Cruiser. All of these little keychains and charms, Christmas ornaments. So ah, that's really nice. I like that. It has the symbol. We've got some sweatshirts, some hats, backpacks. I tried doing a thing and I got caught. I oh my! What okay. what thing were you trying? Well, I, I saw the thing with the with the thing with the <laughs> M band symbol, so I put up to it, and then it was just like, uh -uh. and then I got a message being like, "Hey, I saw you trying to get into stuff." Oh. So I'm like, no, I'm communicating. Yeah, I think I'll just get one of those. So yeah, I think I might get one of these jackets. Some patches and stuff. I kind of want to get a patch. Ooh, I this like that fun. that coaster. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. On there's here. a lot of really nice. Stuff get just unique to the Star Cruiser. Hey, once we learn to play Sabotic, can we get some dice maybe? Oh can yeah, you can just get a coaster set. Oh, there we go. I like that. Yeah, if you want to learn Sabotic, we'll get a, get a set of cards, cards. Okay. special code to be part of the restricted. Oh, we just unlocked the engineering room, Jordy. Yeah. So now I can go over there and look in it. <gasps> no, that's no, it's the It's somewhere over there. I saw it. All right, so we're entering the engineering room. The first thing I notice is all these beautiful details on the wall. It's very cool being in the behind the scenes on the ship and seeing all the interior and the inner workings of what might make a ship work. Yeah, and we kind of were walking in on everybody doing a bunch of little kind of mini games. All of them are kind of just the same mini game. I'm just looking at this monitor, showing what items need to be matched up and then kind of matching up all against the wall. I think a good thing to note is that when we came in here the first time, we had no idea what we were doing. You were looking at your data pad, trying to get answers. I was just pressing random buttons. There was the um, switchboard showing all the major systems. And then we just were pulling levers. So it really took a while to understand how exactly we needed to make this work. So right there on the walls was some of the levers we were kind of talking about. And you have to match up those levers uh, with the blinking lights. And so over there on the right, they'll show which ones are blinking. And right now we're still just trying to figure out. We're like, what are we doing? But so on the left, right there, you can see that blink, those blinking lights over there. And then over on the right, there will be some more blinking lights. We'll pull those levers over there on the right, like that one. But you have to pull them at the same time and then it'll make the light up there turn green and that's how you know that you're doing it right. Mm -hmm. And we just had no idea, we were just pulling them. Well, on top of that too, on my data pad message, it sent me a message saying go do whatever that system was. I'm blanking on what that system ah. was saying. That's why I specifically gravitated to that one. Okay. But I still never quite figured it out. No. So I think that would have started us on the 
uh, smuggler tr tr path. Ah, oh, okay. But I don't know. We have to go do it again. We'll no, never know. Else. Yeah. Because we had just had no idea what we were doing. It wasn't working, so we just walked away. But it was just really cool to see. Ever. I love that carbon-free smoke just coming out of that. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of people in that room at that time, and we were all just kind of figuring it out. We had only been on the Halcyon for, what, an hour at this time? Yeah. So it was all really new. Droid found only here on the Halcyon. All right, let's go ahead and enter the Sublight Lounge. Over to the left is the Halcyon Fume. It uh, is often rubbed on for good luck. And as we enter the Sublight Lounge, the first thing I notice is the beautiful decor. And then of course, the Sabat table right in the center. This was a really cool hangout place for people just to come, enjoy a drink or just good company. Over at the bar, they had amazing drinks. One of my favorites was the Hoth drink, which is this tall sky blue drink with a crystallized snowflake on top. And it had a little bit of a lemony flavor with some aquafaba on top for that, that puff and that refreshment, that foam. And then to the right, that orange one is the Cloud of Bespin. It was a rum-based drink, and it was just sweet and refreshing and so delicious as well. I'm Lieutenant Harmony Crow of the First Order. Pleasure it is to have you aboard our ship, Lieutenant. Now, Lanka, I am sure that I did not see the Lieutenant listed as one of our travelers. I certainly did not, Captain. I'm on your ship, Captain. Because the activities of the house here have attracted suspicion. Oh, this is a civilian star cruiser, so that is highly unlikely. A civilian star cruiser whose ports of course seem to coincide with resistance activity. A star cruiser with food and supplies and cargo space. A star cruiser filled with passengers from anywhere. <laughs> We do not know. That's preposterous. <laughs> I agree, Captain. Can you imagine harboring resistance sympathizers and aiding the enemy? Why? That would be treason. Or reason. Thank you. Your name and position, madam? <laughs> exactly. Blame them off. Who's correct? How fun. By the authority of the First Order, I will be stationed aboard the Halcyon during this voyage. I will investigate your ship, your crew, your captain. Does your droid have something to add? No, they don't. SK, please. Ah. Well, then I'll consider it a working vacation. Now, I need someone to service my ship. You, oh. there. You seem capable, skilled enough. You may need schematics. You'll find them here on this data card. It's a Zy class. Zy class military transport. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I used I, I used to build ships on on Corellia, so so I can handle a shuttle. <laughs> Command shuttle. We will keep an eye. Right. Of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is first day! That's true. Okay. It's okay, Blakey. I can take it from here. <laughs> hey, uh, Holland <Paul> Trooper. <laughs> Captain. Travelers, before every voyage, we raise a glass. Our founder, Shelby, used to say, Tubuite. 
Here's to safe travels, true adventure, and an unforgettable journey aboard the Hellskin. To Booby Now, if everyone would turn their attention to the bridge, where the incredible Smith family will take us into our first jump into hyperspace. On my count, three, two, one, now. So this is a Gaia drink that's not on the menu, has blue foam, and watermelon base. That's good. Really? Yeah. What does it taste like? I mean watermelon, I like this um, blue foam stuff at the top. It's really sweet. Goes well together? Oh, really yeah. sweet? Okay. It's a little sweet at the bottom, which is why I'm glad I got a little uh, bit of the foam at top. It's a very good taste. It's like it's more of that lemon foam. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but not as sweet. Okay. 